Good afternoon. We are here today to learn more about the situation that arose just over a decade ago between professional boxer Kirk Johnson and the Halifax Police. Thanks, Mr. Johnson, for agreeing to join us today. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. How did you get into boxing? I got into boxing at the age of 10. My father, he introduced me to the sport. But he loved the sport and he felt that I could do it and also I wanted to impress my father so I wanted to box and when he put me into it, I loved it. What are some of your most memorable moments from your boxing career? Uh, when I won the world championships at the amateur in 1989-90 over in San Juan, Puerto Rico, that was one of my most one of my most memorable moments and also when I knocked out uh, Oleg Moskayev to get back to get on into the professional boxing scene and also, when I signed a contract for $1.3 million, those were my memorable moments. Will you please explain to us what happened to you back in 1998? Uh, with the police department, right? Mm -hmm. Well, in 1998, me and my cousin Earl Frazier, we were taking a drive. Earl wanted to drive in my new Mustang, so I allowed, allowed him to be the driver, and I was a passenger. And we drove down past McMahon Mall and we came up by Tim Hortons and the police pulled us over. He was following for a little while. He pulled us over and he asked me for the registration and my license and I passed him all that and he didn't accept it. And from there he said he was gonna tow my car. And I told him, why would you tow my car? All my stuff is legit. And I just came home to visit my mother and father. And he still didn't look at my paperwork. He just said, I'm taking your car and that's the bottom line. And I said, if you take my car, I'll see you in court. And that's basically how it happened. When did you finally decide that enough was enough and you were going to take the police to court? I decided that night. I mean, when he took my car, you know, I work hard, very hard. I travel all the time and I, and I dedicate myself. And I just said, you know, he had no right taking my car, and I told him to his face that night. I said, listen, if you take my car, we're going to have a big problem. Just let me go, and everything is cool. He said, no, I'm going to take your car. And right there and then, I knew that it was time for me to make a move. See, Martin Luther King is my hero. And as a young kid, I wanted to be just like Martin Luther King. And he was a civil rights uh, worker for, for uh, black folks, for equality, not just blacks, but all equality and I wanted to be just like him but that night I didn't want to be like him but the situation presented itself and I said you know what this is a lot of injustice going on in our communities with the police just stopping cars and taking cars and I said well I need to go to work and do that and that's what I did. What was the hearing like? It was long. Uh, I think we got there like 7 30 8 o'clock every morning and we left every day at about 6.30, 7 o'clock, and it was a lot of paperwork. Uh, it was a lot of listening to testimonies, and me, I had to train also later on that evening, so those four evenings in a row, I didn't get no sleep at all. It was hard, because I had to keep my eyes open for eight or nine straight hours just looking at people talk, just legal, le these big words and legal words that I knew nothing about. How did you feel when you heard that the judge found the police guilty? I felt good. I felt that it was justice uh, being served. Uh, I wanted justice to be served when I first went into it, but in my mind, justice was always served just for my voice to be heard. But for him to rule in my favor, that was real justice. And it was it, it enabled me to be able to go around to people and let people know that it is justice and it is racism, but at the same time, uh, the reason why racism can go away is because we got good people like the judge who made a good, fair decision. He didn't care that I was black, or he, he was a white judge, but he didn't care that I was black, so he made the right decision, not on color base, but on what the evidence was, and he ruled in my favor. What good came out of the verdict? Well. Like I was saying earlier, the good thing that came with the verdict was the justice can be served whether you're black or white. You have blacks and whites out there that will make a right decision. And like I said, the, the judge was a white judge and he didn't care that I was black or white. He just said, you know what? Kirk Johnson was in the right and I'm gonna say he's in the right and I'm gonna rule in his favor. So that was one of the good things that came out, out of this case. How 
have the police treated you in the years since the verdict? Great. And let me add, before that happened, I was treated great also. But it just that, you know, a few a few handful of people treat you bad, but that's not everybody. So I had respect for the police department before that happened, and they respected me before it happened, and afterwards it happened, they treated me great also. We just had one person that came and did something wrong. How did the situation affect you emotionally and financially? <laughs> emotionally, at first, it took five years to happen because even though the case the case was in 98, April of 98, right? Mm -hmm. And I won the verdict in 2003. So it took five years, and five years I was upset, I was kind of angry, and I was saying that justice will not be served because it took so long. But when, when the verdict finally came out that I won the case, you know, it gave me some type of hope, and some of the anger that I had had left. Some of the anger of they're not being fair, and this is what white people like to do to black people. When that verdict came, then I had to go back to reality and say, you know what? I had a great time in school when I went to school, because I went to this school when I was your age. Okay. And the teachers always treated me fair here. So all that did was make, make me remember the good time I had in school and, and remember that, you know, don't forget you, all, you always got treated good before this year happened. Is there anything you would like to say to young African Nova Scotians? I would just like to say to uh, my young black students, uh, keep your head up high and don't just use the word racism just because somebody tried to treat you unfairly. Uh, don't say you can't do it because you're African American. That's the, the I mean, African Canadian, that's the word you guys use? Yeah, but I, I use black, but anyway, <laughs> yeah. But uh, just keep your head up high and, and make sure you do your school work and make sure that you don't have a criminal record and that was one of the things that helped me out in this case when they talked to me when we went to court the trial they said well is Kirk Johnson known to the police department and normally when you're known in the police department that means you're a criminal I was never a criminal never had no record or whatever so it looked pretty good when I went against the police department that they couldn't say that Kirk is a is a criminal so thank you very much for your time thank you very much